Hi everyone, I'm Simone and in this video we're going to discuss about a strategy that has revolutionized the way we handle software releases. We're talking about blue-green deployment. Let's start with the basics. Imagine you've got two identical twin environments and let's call them blue and green. Blue is the environment that everyone is using right now, while green contains all the latest updates and features. Once green is all set and ready to show off, we just swap them and voila! Your user get the new version and updates without even noticing. This magical switch means zero downtime, less risk, and if any problem arise, no worries, you can just flip back to blue faster than you can say roll back. That's what I call stress-free deployment. But how did this blue-green strategy come to be? Let's rewind to 2005. Picture this. Two developers, Daniel North and Jets Humble, were tearing their hair out over an e-commerce site that kept throwing cure balls in production. They had tests in place, but somehow bugs were zipping through, causing all kind of chaos. So what did they do? They came up with a crazy idea. Let's test in production. Yeah, I know, I know. Testing in production sounds like a recipe for a disaster, right? But here's the twist. They didn't just override the whole site. Nope. They deployed a new version side by side with the whole one. So the customer didn't even know a new version was released. So sneaky, right? This tactic allowed them to catch errors in an environment that was identical to production. And guess what? It worked like a charm. They call this approach blue-green because, well, colors don't have a picking order like letters do. It's all about keeping things on a, an even playing field. The magic of blue-green lies in side-by-side -side deployment. To pull this off, you need two separate but identical environments. And when I say environment, I mean the whole package. Database, virtual machines, containers, configuration, everything. Sometimes you need physical different machines, while other times you just, need, you just need different virtual machines that runs on the same hardware, or even different containers that run on the same device. In its purest form, blue-green is about duplicate every single resource that your application relies on. In practice, however, it doesn't always make sense to run a spare copy of everything. For example, Keeping two databases in sync is notably hard. For that reason, we frequently find blue-green deployment with shared components. We also need a way to switch incoming connections between the two environments. And we can symbolize this as a router, but it could be a physical router, a load balancer, a, a reverse proxy, or like in the original setup, a trusted web server. Blue and green take turns to play the role of production. Only one environment could be live at any given time. Say for instance that blue is active, and in that case it receives all the traffic, while green acts like a staging area where we can deploy and test the new version. Once we make sure that the version running in green is working well, we'll switch the route. Then the cycle begins again. Running two full environments all the time can be pricey, but don't worry, we got the tools to help with that. Thanks to on-demand infrastructure, we can spin up or tear down resources whenever we need. For example, platforms like Ansible or Terraform allow us to start and stop servers with just a few lines of codes. We can streamline releases with containers or manage the whole deployment process with Kubernetes. And here is the best part. When you factor in cloud's flexibility and cost savings, blue-green deployment becomes a realistic option for everyone. The cloud abstracts most infrastructure away. We can picture deployments as a series of loosely coupled components. When it's time for a new release, we create new resources without touching the live environment. In practice, we'll use CI CD tools like Semaphore to create identical new components and make the deployment. We then reroute all user connections at once. 
Once the deployment is complete and we are satisfied, we can scrap the old environment. So who can really benefit from blue-green deployment? If uptime is your top priority, I mean, you cannot afford to take your system down for updates, blue-green deployment might be your new best friend. Need super accurate tests? Blue-green as your back, with precise and reliable testing. And if you're looking for rock-solid reliability for deployments, well, Blue-green is definitely worth a look. But like all the good things, there's a catch. You need a few key ingredients to pull off blue-green deployments. Automation. You need continuous delivery pipelines to automate everything. Provisioning, deployment, testing. Testing. You've got to have serious testing in place. These tests are the final gatekeeper before anything goes live. And with continuous integration, you catch errors early and make sure new versions are ready to roll. You need two identical but separate environments. If they are not isolated, one could mess with the other and nobody wants that. But here's the thing, not everyone can jump on the blue-green bandwagon. Sometimes it just doesn't fit. For example, maybe you can do continuous updates. Or you are in a regulated industry, for example, aerospace or healthcare, where software updates are a whole different ball game. Or simply, you might not have the chance to create two separate environments. Or maybe your infrastructure doesn't allow you to use load balancer, reverse proxy, and so on. And what about those tricky database changes? If they are not backward compatible, then blue green might not be your best option. Now, why is blue green awesome? Let's dive into the pros. Testing parity. This is the golden ticket. Your tests mirror the production environment, so they are more accurate and meaningful. Deploy any time. No downtime means you can update whatever you want. You, you don't have to wait those maintenance windows. Instant cutover. Users switch uh, to the new version almost immediately. Everyone get the new release at the same time. Instant rollback. If anything goes wrong, you can flip back to the previous version in a heartbeat. Hot standby. Disaster recovery just got easier. If one data center goes down, you can switch to the other one until everything is back on track. Postmortem. The bug in failure releases is hard with in-place deployments. Collecting debugging data is secondary, so a lot of valuable information may be lost during the rollback. But blue-green doesn't suffer from this problem. Rollback always leaves the failing deployment intact for analysis. But let's be real, there are downsides too. For example, cold starts. Users might experience some slowdown while switching to the new environment. Cost is not cheap. If you're doing multiple large-scale deployments daily, those costs can hot up quickly. Time. Setting up blue-green deployment requires time and effort. It's a complex process, and you might need a few tries to get it just right. Databases can be tricky. Migration could become a real headache, especially if you have to keep things forward and backward compatible. Another problem is about user transactions. During the switch, uh, some transaction could be interrupted, so you have to figure out how to handle them. And lastly, but not least, uh, shared services. Watch out for shared components uh, like databases, uh, because they could leak information between the environments, which could mess up your deployment. As you can see, blue-green has many advantages over the traditional in-place deployments, but it also has some downsides. Some people simply do not like the all-or-nothing strategy and prefer canary releases, which combine elements from blue-green and in-place deployments and offer more gradual transitions. Some people simply do not like the all-or-nothing strategy and prefer canary releases, which combine elements from the blue-green and in-place deployments and offer more gradual transitions. So this video was about blue-green deployment. Thank you for joining me in this journey. Of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, uh, follow us for more content and let's see in another video.